Welcome, my beautiful people, to kind of another episode of Dino Basics, where we usually dig up the basics on our favorite deceased beasts, or at least stuff that is somewhat prehistoric adjacent. My name is Logan, and instead of having to journey back millions of years to a long-forgotten world, we will be looking towards, well, today. Dinosaurs continue to live on through our recreation of them in movies, television, animatronics, and whatever this thing is. But according to some, they may not be gone altogether. Those who believe this will point towards the subject of today's video, the Mokole Mbembe. Mokole Mbembe, more accurately written as the text seen below, is a mythological creature of Bantu mythology, a collection of beliefs from a wide range of African cultures, largely found throughout Central and Southern Africa. Its name originates from the Lingala language, loosely translated to one who stops the flow of rivers. The creature is often described as a water-dwelling beast that wanders through the Congo River Basin, a system of winding rivers stretching across and throughout the modern-day country of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. But most relevant to this channel is its belief to be a sauropod dinosaur, as reports indicate the creature to have a long neck, bulky body, and lengthy tail, similar to sauropod dinosaurs like the Diplodocus or Brachiosaurus. Size estimates have ranged from nearly 70 feet or 22 meters in length to as small as 15 feet or 5 meters in length. To get a better idea of what this creature was, let's go through the history of Mokole Mbembe to better understand how our perception of this creature has evolved over time. Mokole Mbembe existed as a legend throughout the Congo River Basin for centuries, long before the first expeditions by European explorers, and was not actually the only large mythological creature dredging through the African forests. For example, the Emela Untuka, translating to Killer of Elephants, was a rhinoceros-like creature sporting a long, sharp horn at the edge of its nose. Or the Naguma Monene, translating to Large Boa, a serpentine-like lizard sporting a forked tongue and possibly capable of conducting electrical currents. Once again focusing on Mokole Umbembe, the earliest European sightings of the creature date back to 1776, when Abbe Lievon Bonaventure Proyar briefly mentioned enormous claw marks and footprints measuring nearly three feet in circumference. Proyar would not live long enough to learn more about what this creature was, for one, because the average life expectancy in the 1800s was around 40, and in 1808 he would be executed for talking smack about the French Revolution which, knowing the time, was probably just as common as natural death. The next significant development for Mokole would come in 1913, sparked by the German government's desire to better survey their African colonies, specifically the colony of Cameroon. Captain Freiherr von Stein zu Lausnitz would lead this expedition and report on a large, unidentified creature living in the area. Lausnitz would never see the creature himself, but based his descriptions on interviews with locals and guides in the area. An official report would never be published, but author Willie Lay would, in 1941, quote Lausnitz for the following. Becoming essentially the baseline of what we know Makole Mbembe as today, a large, long-necked creature with an extensive tail and an extremely territorial attitude. Important to note is that this animal was never described by Lausnitz as a sauropod or even a dinosaur, instead being described vaguely and often only regarded as a quote-unquote creature. The lack of direct evidence would usually result in such reports falling by the wayside, lost to the annals of history. However, news outlets reporting on the creature, which first began in the early 1900s and would see a significant surge after Lay's reprinting of Lausnitz's report, would claim the described creature to be a dinosaur, often comparing the creature to sauropods like the Brontosaurus. This association was an eye-catching one for the average reader, as dinosaurs were a popular topic following the Bone Wars era of excavation and pop culture icons like Gertie. Everyone loves Gertie. 
Regardless, the idea of dinosaur-like creatures in Africa became something of a phenomenon in mass media, elevating Makole Mbembe from a local African legend to a worldwide phenomenon. This massive boost in media attention would lead to various expeditions being organized to explore the African jungles and potentially find the surviving sauropod, with varying credibility. Many professional paleontologists claim Makole Mbembe is more likely native guides misidentifying large African animals known to science, leaving expeditions to be funded by other groups, such as cryptozoologists, a pseudoscience studying the existence of disputed creatures including Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and the Chubacabra, to name a few, as well as young Earth creationists, a form of creationism believing the Earth is only about 8,000 years old, opposed to the scientific belief that the Earth was formed nearly 4.5 billion years ago. Now, this is not to say expeditions funded by these groups can't have scientific merit, but these sources are important to note when considering possible bias and conflicts of interest. Studies from these groups would not be accepted by many established scientists, including paleontologists like Donald Prothero, who often dismiss such expeditions, claiming them more likely to be efforts to contradict scientific concepts, namely evolution. One of the most famous expeditions during this time came from herpetologist James H. Powell and biologist Roy Mackle who led various expeditions into the Congo region throughout the late 1970s and early 1980s, and eventually published a book of their findings in 1987 called A Living Dinosaur in Search of Mokole Mbembe. Prothero criticized various parts of this expedition. For example, he noted how Mackel's background in virology made him unqualified to even lead such an expedition especially for a multi-tonned prehistoric dinosaur, and drew issue with how the book pointed towards Mokole Umbembe's existence without any physical evidence, only eyewitness accounts. Furthermore, he accused the book of downplaying those interviewed who did not believe in the beast, skewing their data and providing no dissenting voices in their study. Now, for various reasons, it is difficult to completely disprove the existence of something, it's easy to just stick a yet at the end of we haven't found anything. Finding Bigfoot lasted a hundred episodes and seven years with no conclusive evidence. And there are still those that believe in Bigfoot. I'm just going to say it. If James Bobo Fay can't find it, maybe it isn't real. Regardless, let's break this down into some clear, rational questions to better answer questions around Macaulay's existence. First, could an animal as old as a sauropod dinosaur still exist today? Technically, yes. You've probably heard of the concept of living fossils, but if you have not, a living fossil is a term for a species or clade of animal that has had few, if any, morphological changes for an extended period of time. Take, for example, one of the most famous members, the coelacanth, a bony fish that has appeared in fossil records from nearly 400 million years ago and still lives today, largely unchanged. Important to note, a living fossil does not indicate a creature has not evolved for this period of time. While a 400 million year old coelacanth and a modern coelacanth may look similar, they have evolved and changed externally and internally, just at a much slower rate. The term living fossil is often in reference to superficial features, rather than actual genetic makeup. It's difficult to determine what conditions must be met for an animal to be able to remain unchanged for any amount of time. The coelacanth likely could thank its lack of natural predators and fairly stable deep sea environment for its lack of change. But other organisms like crocodiles and lamprey have seen considerably more competition closer to the surface and still remain superficially similar to their long dead ancestors. Considering how sauropods were able to survive superficially unchanged between the early Jurassic to the late Cretaceous, representing a range of nearly 150 million years, 
it certainly is within the realm of possibility that a sauropod could maintain a similar body structure another 66 million years, from the late Cretaceous to today. Next, could an animal as large as a sauropod still remain undiscovered today? Also, yes. As recently as 2011, a new species of beaked whale was discovered in New Zealand, measuring nearly 16 feet or 5 meters in length. And even more impressive, in 2020, a new species of siphonophore was discovered, measuring a staggering 150 feet long, the current longest organism ever discovered. However, these discoveries are limited to the deep ocean, some of the most unexplored and difficult regions on our Earth to access. So a better question would be, could a land animal as large as a sauropod dinosaur still remain undiscovered in Africa? With a healthy population? Absolutely not. In the last almost 100 years, the largest terrestrial animal to be discovered would be the okapi, discovered all the way back in 1901. At almost 6 feet in height and about 600 pounds, it is not even close to an average-sized sauropod like the Brontosaurus, who reached almost 27 feet in height and 40,000 pounds. But perhaps a smaller population could elude our sight even today, right? Well, back to that healthy population point. In the biology field, there's a term called the minimum viable population, an equation that calculates the minimum number of individuals that would be needed to avoid inbreeding and ensure the healthy continuation of an animal. It's difficult to broadly apply this calculation to any animal, especially extinct ones, as it takes into consideration a variety of factors like size and reproduction rate. For the sake of comparison, let's base the MVP of a sauropod to that of a Komodo dragon. Both are reptiles and likely had similar gestation periods and sexual maturity ages. But it is also likely sauropods were similar to Komodo dragons in parenting style, leaving them to largely fend for themselves. Again, it's difficult to consider this a one-to-one -one comparison, but there aren't many modern animals that can be compared to... Yeah, that. The MVP for Komodo dragons, according to an estimate by Komodo dragon expert Denny Perwandana, would be about 15,283 individuals. So let's put this back into context of Makole Umbembe. In order for Makole Umbembe to truly be a surviving sauropod dinosaur, this would require at least 15,020 ton giant reptiles avoiding documentation and leaving no physical evidence for over 400 years without fail. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty tricky. So with all of this under consideration, is it likely that the Makole Umbembe truly exists? No. With no feasible physical evidence of the creature ever discovered, it is extremely unlikely. Skeptics believe it is more likely local guides or natives of the region recognizing the black rhinoceros, which were more common during the early expeditions of the late 1700s and early 1800s, but gradually declined moving into the 20th and 21st century and the creature we recognize as the Mokole Umbembe is likely a mixture of native mythology, folklore, and sensationalized depictions from the early 1900s media and pseudoscience groups. Despite its probable non-existence, Mokole Umbembe has been able to live beyond its mythological status, making sparse appearances in our modern media. While it is nowhere near some of the more widely recognized cryptids like Bigfoot or Loch Ness, Mokole was a significant part of the 1985 film Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend, where an expedition stumbles upon a family of brontosaurs while searching for Mokole. Unfortunately, the movie couldn't discover decent critical reception, but I digress. The creature would also make smaller appearances, including the 1992 comic book The Punisher and Wolverine African Saga, 2019's film Godzilla King of the Monsters as an Unseen Titan, as well as a purple crystal covered monster in the second season of the 2018 anime Goblin Slayer. While Makole Umbembe fits quite neatly among the other members of the cryptid pantheon, 
It is a unique case for dinosaurs. Many questions from paleontologists aim to try and answer questions relevant to our distant past, when these mighty behemoths once dominated our planet. But Macaulay Mbembe looks to our present, asking if these once grand creatures could continue to exist in the hidden corners out of sight, not unlike our own mammal ancestors during the time of Titans. Unfortunately, that answer is almost certainly no. But it is no doubt a captivating quandary, one that has captured our imaginations for generations, and most likely, generations to come. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Mokole Umbembe, and if you've heard of this creature before the video. I've always had a soft spot for cryptozoology. I can't say I'm convinced by many of their theories, but there's something so captivating about it. Like, yeah, maybe there is a big monkey man out there. You'll find them, Bobo. One day. Next week, we'll be returning to the past to explore the basics on something I certainly hope isn't prowling the African wilds today. The Archback Super Predator, Acrocanthosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.